So start this off. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time for joining today. Uh, my name is Joey. I'm the director of brand management at SFM. Um, Bluestream is a relatively new brand, new addition to the, to the family, uh, but very complimentary to all the other brands that we, uh, we do carry. Uh, Jason's joining us today. He's giving us an overview of, of Bluestream, uh, the value proposition, and going into some details on some of the products. Uh, Jason's been in the AV industry for 13 years, and he's um, the product manager for Bluestream at, uh, uh, from San Diego. And I'm going to turn it over to, to Maddie Michelle. Uh, she'll just do some housekeeping, uh, then we'll, we'll get started. Yeah, so welcome, everyone, and thank you for participating. So my name is Maddie Michelle. Uh, I'm the program marketing uh, <laughs> manager for uh, Systems. Uh, so I will be here and link the chat. I just want to let you know also that this meeting is recorded. So I will, after this presentation, uh, send to all of you who participated uh, an email, the little survey, the presentation that we've had today, and the recording of that presentation. So you can have access to it and be watching. If you have any questions, at the end of this session, we'll have a Q&A. So I will be able to unmute you all so you can ask your questions. If you have other questions, you can add it to uh, the meeting chat, and I will go through it and leave it there. Thank you. I'll leave the mic to Jason. All right. Thank you. All right. So uh, Jason Fitzgerald, a product manager here for Bluestream in the U.S. And today we're going to talk about Bluestream, right? So, you know, the why Bluestream, talk a little bit about the brand itself. Um, but then, of course, and dive into the product, the product catalog, you know, again, there's quite a few SKUs that uh, Bluestream does bring to the table. And so, you know, how we methodically categorize these products um, and then also, of course, you know, what's that proposition, the value to, of course, you, the customer. Um, and so what I'll do is, well, because there are quite a few categories, I'll, I'll call out just a few of the key products that I know you know, help us differentiate ourselves from the pack. I mean, there's, of course, some products will be similar to others that you probably have seen. And and these are necessities of products that we need to have within the lineup. Um, but then, of course, you know, the, the products that really kind of set us apart, where we've really kind of innovated on, and I'll and I'll help point those out. But, you know, the, the why Bluestream, and a lot of it really boils down to the fact, and I just kind of mentioned with the large catalog that we have, is that it's a complete AV distribution line, right? So we have products that really saturate any vertical that you can think of. So residential, security, corporate, hospitality, education, command and control, live event venue, all of those types of verticals. Certainly Bluestream has a part and has played a part in many of those kinds of projects to date. And we do this by building products primarily that we've built products around technology. And so thusly, we've had very good technology partners with you know certain technologies like HDMI, HD base T, SDVOE, Dante, these are all different technologies that you very likely have heard of, um, certainly prevalent in the industry. And we build upon this technology uh, to make certain solutions and not always a solution that, you know, is going to open up every feature that's particularly available on an IC because, you know, if that's not warranted by a particular application that we feel a product is good for, then we won't do it. Uh, and by being more concerted in our efforts and how we build products, it really kind of leads to value. Thusly, you know, we like to say we're we're premium performance, but value price. So hopefully you'll see that as we work through the catalog and we look at the different solutions that Bluestream offers, that you'll see that we aren't going to be the most expensive brand out there, but likewise, we're not the most inexpensive. Um, but based really on the features that we have, we certainly consider ourselves a premium partner in terms of what we're able to offer the market. Um, and because Bluestream really was developed, um, you know, outside of the North American market, started out in Australia roughly about 10 years ago now. So we've been around for a while, um, then moving into the APAC territories, Europe, and finally now into North America. Um, we've had an opportunity over those that last decade to work on some very world renowned projects. And fortunately for us, the products have been been placed in some very, you know, uh, critical mission critical mission critical types of applications. And we'll talk about just one of them to give you an idea what Bluestream and, and where we've been and what we're capable of doing. So beyond that, it's important to note that, you know, in terms of this technology that we develop into uh, the AV distribution category in general, and that we've been doing it for, for, like I said, over a decade now, is that we need to lead by example. And so thusly, we do offer an advanced learning portal where we have training available. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. But what's important to us is really you to get the support that you need, um, you know, pre-sales, 
during installation and even after sales support. In fact, I was just on a chat a little bit earlier with a customer talking about a product and that converted into a phone call and we got him up and running uh, fairly quickly, right? So this stuff happens constantly day in, day out. And this is a service we certainly like to, to you know, tout the brand upon. Um, and lastly, we're in stock. So this is a kind of an important thing that, you know, may, maybe necessarily wasn't something big news, but, you know, due to the pandemic and a lot of shortages that we saw, being in stock played a huge role into how, you know, how business was conducted during that period and even after that period. And during the pandemic, we, we were able to maintain about a 95% in stock ratio for all of our product. And this helped propel the Bluestream name, especially, you know, in the U.S. side um, over, you know, during those last few years when we were first getting up and running here in the U.S., and so to that date, we will still maintain about 95, actually a little bit greater than that now with all the products. And we do that through Foresight. Like, for example, Bluestream is located, its main office is in Australia, you know, basically Audinate's backyard and a good relationship with the Dante folks. And we're able to procure a ton of the Audinate, specifically like the Ultimo chips that we use in some of our products. Um, and we're able to keep our, our, our lines moving throughout the pandemic. Um, next, it, when we look at the brand itself, um, this is what we like to call the triangle of success, you know, and um, I jokingly and I say this very often, but really, every company and brand should be striving to 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 these points, where at the bottom of this, we have reliability, right? the base, the foundation of our triangle of success. Um, but we really take that to heart. And, and with reliability for us, we were looking at a 1% or less than a 1% defect ratio on all of our products. And we use this to help, of course, again, keep us and maintain us in mission critical applications so you can be confident, your customers can be confident in knowing these products will work day in and day out. Um, in terms of, of features on products, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is that we do build products focused with specific use cases in mind and a lot of times with customer needs. And so putting that as our focal point, we'll build on products you know, or on specific platforms. So let's face it, the, the the there's a finite number of ICs in the market and all manufacturers really build on the, a lot of these same platforms. It's really picking what parts of those ICs we connect and actually use um, and then what's the most important part. So we're not building features and, 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 and you know, features into products that, you know, in, inherently don't end up getting used by a lot of customers. So we're very focused in that approach. And that, of course, then leads to value, right? Because then you're going to end up with value on a product because, for example, it's going to be using features that we know are, are prevalently used out there and not building something, for example, that's not. So that's very important to us. So reliability, features, and value. And we do this, like I said, based on technologies. We saw that before with the brand seen here. Um, and we do this quite successfully now. Uh, working very closely with the likes of Valens and SDVOE, A-Speed, Dante, et cetera, et cetera. But in tandem to this, having products that work well or based on these technologies is great, but being able to control them is equally as important. So directly on the Bluestream site, you'll find availability for drivers for all of these different manufacturers, actually, and more. So like with QSYS, we have our first QSYS driver actually that we've tested, and it's through their QSYS actually, through their program, their um, driver uh, compatibility program. Um, so it is completely vetted by them through RTI. In fact, drivers are are natively built in for Bluestream products into the RTI platform, uh, Xtron Control 4, et cetera, et cetera, uh, Crestron. So these are all available because it's a necessity, right? To make sure you'll be able to control products, we need to have the drivers. And of course, this is something we definitely heavily invest in. And those projects, this kind of gives you a little bit of a snapshot here in the US. For example, we've been able to win some some nice, nice projects. I and mean, one of them is the New Balance Stadium in Boston uses Bluestream video over IP products. Um, Yale University uses a, a subset of another video over IP product that we have. But the key in one that I like to talk about, if we're going to talk about anyone, is going to be the Olympics. And in 2018, uh, Bluestream, we partnered with the OBS organization to provide the video infrastructure for media commentary that would happen at the Olympics. So you could walk into an Olympic, you know, into a venue, a particular venue, and you could watch the broadcast feeds from that particular venue or from any other venue um, that was going out the Olympics. And this is important. Sorry, Jason, oh, yeah. I don't mean to, I don't mean to interrupt you, but uh, your PowerPoint is, you're not sharing it. Oh, that is, I was talking and there was no PowerPoint. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it might help if you could see the screen. Do we see it now? This is better. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no problem. I know I don't give a lot, a lot of times often people the opportunity to interject. So thank you. That's super important. Um, and just to reiterate, I did have slides before. I can promise you that there was content. <laughs> 
There we go. Hopefully that's a little bit better now. So talking about the Olympics. So in 2018 and and the Olympics organization, um, I mean, this is a kind of project where um, you either do it well and you're asked to come back or you fail and they ship you back with your product. And that's the last time you will see them again. And so in 2018, we completed that Olympic successfully. That led to 2020, or which is really 2021 for the Tokyo Olympics, which is the largest deployment that we had, Beijing. And now we're working towards Paris, right, in 2024. So these Olympic Games, the largest one here in Tokyo, uh, was about a 500 by 1700 uh, endpoint system, right, for video over IP. So we're talking about large swaths of fiber that was being, you know, between the different venues. I'm talking about kilometers and kilometers of distance worth of fiber that was able to interconnect all these these you know different venues to get everything to work, you know, to to work in concert. And the thing about the Olympics too, and and this one is that while they could you know commission kind of each venue separately, it was only till right about the day before the opening ceremonies that everything get turned on and connected and actually tested to work. So there's a lot of pressure here. And sure enough, the system turned on. It's turned on flawlessly for the last couple of games. And that's always nice to hear. And so even our teams that are on on site now have gone from you know a large team now down to splitting the team up to you know, one or only one or two individuals will have to be on site to help manage the games and all of this equipment and no failures. Um, you know, the light, one one example I like to talk about is in is in Tokyo. You know, they had the the outdoor beach volleyball venue where they had our units actually sitting out in the sun, enough for the silk screens to become discolored yet still no failures. And that's some of the benefit of using an ASIC, like the ASIC we're using in our video over IP products. So moving on to support, and this is a very important thing to note, of course, is that from a support standpoint, you are guaranteed to get support pre-sales, during installation, and like I mentioned before, post-sales as well, very important. So, and we do this, as you can see here, we have different bases of operation throughout the globe. So we have obviously Melbourne, which is a, the company was founded. We have also in the Asia territories, we have two locations in Europe and in the U.S. that covers North America. It's actually located in Minnesota. So it's about mid, you know, midway in, in terms of, you know, for a time zone perspective. Um, and through this, we can offer what we call 24-6 global support. So 24 hours a day, six days a week. So Monday, roughly through late afternoon on Friday, picking back up on Sunday. Um, we, you can talk to any individual uh, from Bluestream. So whether it's from a U.S. office or from an external office, you can get a hold of someone to actually physically talk to. Right, And that's an important thing. And the other, the other benefit, I kind of mentioned it earlier, this live chat. If you go look at the website, on the bottom right-hand corner of the site, there's actually a live chat feature. And that pings out to all product managers like myself and tech support members and allows us to help keep in contact and get immediate responses to whether they're general inquiries about a product or something that's more specific, like a technical issue that can convert to a phone call, which is what exactly happened this morning when I was on a call, right? In addition to that, of course, we have that education and training. I mentioned the advanced learning portal. So through this portal, which you can sign up directly on the Bluestream website. Um, I've got a link there for you. And of course, we can pass this around afterwards, but you can go to the website. You can sign up for the advanced learning portal. And through this, there are over 50 courses that roughly about eight hours worth of content that talk not only about Bluestream products um, that are interspersed through there. It is mainly focused really on the technologies um, and really the inner workings of how these technologies work in our industry and how they apply to our products. So it's general knowledge that you can gain. It's excellent for technical support members, for sales teams to either brush up or to learn about this. We have a number of, of, of distributors, a number of dealers who use this as a primer to get their teams or, or new, even new team members um, you know, very comfortable with video technology, right? video and audio. Right. And the nice thing about this, too, is that once you get through the compulsory learning section, which is basically just talking about the generals of HDMI, you can then, of course, mix and match and, and pick and choose and learn at your own pace as needed and then can get certified. So you can learn about multicast video. You can learn about how HD based T works and some best practices with HD based T. All of that is available through this portal and it's absolutely free. And I definitely suggest you take advantage of that. <clears throat> So let's talk about solutions. We talked about products and there are lots of products. So how and what kind of products? Again, based around technologies like you can see here, USB, HDMI, Dante, et cetera. If you think of those as planets um, with really the categories of products that we make as orbiting satellites, you can see that there's quite a bit that we do, 
right, based around these technologies. So what we've done is we've distilled that down. And the way you can find this either like on our website or how we like to talk about it uh, are through this, right? So talking either about a specific technology like Dante and it having its own category or something more simple about a product and, and what its function is like an extender. Or we may even, you know, talk about a product and its vertical like presentation switches, which is a lot more specific. But we know that that we've spent a lot of painstaking time separating out and making sure we're curta not curtailing, but catering these conversations, right, based around these, because this is often how customers are looking for products. I need an extender because extenders, as you probably very well know, is one of the most common necessities for almost any kind of application out there, right? Getting a signal from point A to point B beyond the standard copper limitations of most cables. We need an extender. Or for example, you work in the venue or in the vertical for, you know, boardrooms, right? Presentation switchers in the corporate side and doing huddle rooms and things like that. You need a presentation of some sort. So that's typically how we talk about this. So over 100 SKUs, we won't talk about them all today. That is impossible to talk about, even though I may try with how quickly I speak. But there's certainly, like I said, quite a bit to, to that catalog. So the first one we'll, we'll look at is extenders. So these are the AVCs of our, you know, of our, of our, of our industry, right? So um, that's my little play on the AVCs, I suppose. But AVCs for audio, video, and control. And what you'll find is a wide array of products that allow us to send either individually audio, video, and control as individuals, or in many cases, you know, in concert together as products that either do it, you know, HDMI and USB, for example, in a singular product, right? So, and we've striven or we've strived, I should say, through, you know, painstaking, you know, efforts over the last decade to build products that we know are going to be relevant to your customers. So we cover everything from doing, you know, as short a distance as 40 meters, clearing across to even 150 meters. If you're familiar with HDBST using something called long reach mode, which is a, a firmware, a change on a product that will actually allow us to go 150 meters at 1080p. So things like that. Um, our first fiber optic product, which we'll look at here in a second. Wall plates, of course, is a necessity too, especially we're talking about in the control space. But think about this HDMI, USB-C, DisplayPort, even VGA are all extenders that we have, right? And, and working on some of the latest and greatest tech. You know, and if we look at this and, and looking at really kind of our, our first product here, um, the hex 31 wall plate. So hex 31 wall plate is, is a transmitter, an HDBC transmitter that obviously we know wall plates are an important part of commercial business, you know, um, being able to have a finished wall plate that goes into a hospitality type of, um, you know, implementation uh, or somewhere where we need to have temporary connectivity. That's where these of course come into play. And so we have a few of these, of course, this one being the three ones. So we've got two HDMI and, and a USB-C that of course can take NVIDIA from any of these that auto switch with even the ability on the back end side to control displays. So whether directly from a push button, it's located on the front panel of this unit, or through an API on the background, these are just some of the, the features, of course, that we'll, we'll have on, on, on our product. So um, the other one I want to talk about uh, is flipping to the opposite end, is talking about HDBST, right? So I believe probably everyone here is familiar with the technology. It has kind of turned the industry on its ear. I remember working with them back in 2000 and nine on the first products, no one knew who HDBase-T was. So we called it obviously something else, but now that has changed. Everyone knows who HDBase-T is and they're on its third iteration, HDBase-T 3.0. And that has brought a lot to the table in terms of an upgrade. So we're talking about uncompressed HDMI 2.0 over a CAT 6A cable, um, upping the bandwidth that we can do on a five play product like this one from hundred megabits to a gigabit while providing forward and reverse video, you know? So we can actually go forward 4K 60. 444. And on the back end side, we can actually bring back some something to the effect of about 720p or using that for bringing something back like ER. So this particular product, HDBase-T 3.0, Bluestream has been building with them and selling HDBase-T 3.0 products for over a year. And I like talking about this because this gives you a little bit of an idea of the technology that we are, you know, supporting, that we are integrated with, right? So Bluestream was the first brand to get certified with 3.0. And, and since then, we've actually been developing on this platform. Um, we've got a new matrix that's coming out. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But to give you an idea, of course, when we talk about high technology, Bluestream, that's certainly what we like to do. And this particular product, the Hex18G Arc, opens up a number of different features. This really is a product aimed at the commercial market where we've got HDMI, 
bidirectionally. We have five places. So you have one gigabit of Ethernet that you can send across this link. You've got your standard control signaling uh, across the way with IR and with serial capabilities. But also you'll notice you've got USB, um, both host and device capability on each end. And why is that? Is because on this device, we actually have the ability to flip the direction that it, USB flows. So when we talk about a scenario like in a huddle or a conference room where we have a smart board or a, um, other kind of device, which in itself is an originating you know, or a source device where we need to maybe exert some control on this, we need to be able to control it from remote distance, no problem, right? Or you need to connect something over USB from a, from a remote distance. We can flip the flow to have video still forward being fed from, let's say, a local PC to that screen, uh, like a BYOM or BYOD type of uh, local PC that's connecting to that display. And then at the same time, being able to take and provide it with the USB devices, flash devices, uh, any really any kind of devices supporting on this platform for USB. So it's isochronous and asynchronous USB are both capable on this, right? So again, this opens up a lot of features, but on the back end side of this, we also at the same time developed a product that is just basic HDMI, but carries with it the same uncompressed capabilities, right? So again, building product where we feel relevant. This is something that's more relevant for conference room applications. While the HDMI version, the, the, the little brother, I would say of this is strictly for HDMI and those applications where we want or need an uncompressed HDMI for various reasons, whether it be for medical application uh, or specifically for the fidelity that we need across that link with no latency. The other product I've got here is the FBE 4K kit. This is Bluestream's first fiber optic extender that we have. Um, Bluestream does carry some AOC type cabling that allows it all the way up to 8K, but this is the first true fiber optic kind of product that Bluestream offers. And because we do find the necessity, um, you know, for the need to have fiber optic uh, solutions, whether it's for the resiliency to, you know, um, RFI or for EMI um, or for the distance you can get over fiber optics, certainly the necessity. So this uses the uh, SDVOE platform's ASIC. So not building on the FPGA platform, but on the ASIC, which helps us keep the cost down and also keeps us within that technological realm of SDVOE, which also means it's IP-based. We can set it up on a network, you know, and this is a point-to-point -point KVM style device that we can cover extremely long distances on. Um, in fact, a university here, which I can't quite name, a very large prestigious one, we are looking at swapping all of their infrastructure over to these fiber kits to replace aging units that they've got in the site that they need something easier to manage. It's going to provide both USB and video, everything over a single fiber optic link. And this is the FV, FVE 4K kit. So next we'll talk about AV Essentials. And AV Essentials is kind of a large category because it covers all those essential products that not necessarily may stand on their own, but really help encompass, you know, that full project that needs to be completed. So like a splitter oftentimes is going to be used in tandem with other devices, uh, building blocks, so to speak, right? And so what we have here um, in the, from a splitter standpoint, you know, two, four, eight different um, different kinds of splitting devices that Bluestream offers. And there's obviously some other ones as well. But even on these particular, we look at features that are certainly useful, like in mixed scenarios. We know splitters are used very often in things like digital signage. Um, you know, you think about a big box retailer, a brick and mortar store that is actually trying to address multiple screens. And in a different life, that is something I certainly did where they've got a lot of screens in one location and they need to split them out. But this also has the ability to scale individually on each output using smart scaling. So, of course, we can on an individual basis either, you know, address 4K or 1080p um, using any of these splitting devices. Switchers. Same function, again, typically used in tandem, but of course we'll have an array of different switching devices which help us add inputs to different scenarios. But the real exciting stuff comes really in these, right? Part of the AV Essentials line is the extension and conversion products. Conversion is a broad category, but when you think about it, a lot of times the last 5% on a job is some kind of conversion or, or some kind of problem that needs to be resolved that really only takes a small piece to, to accomplish like an A to D converter or a D to A or something that's going to convert, you know, different formats between digital, toslink, coaxial. And so Bluestream, of course, has an entire range of these. And some of our most popular products in terms of the velocity, in terms of, uh, you know, from a quantity perspective that Bluestream we've been successful with is some of our audio extenders. The analog audio over cat cable, for example, is over cat cable. You get 500 meters of distance of analog audio. Right, um, which is certainly very useful in any scenario where we need to do something unbalanced across, you know, a long distance. Uh, digital audio over cat cable, um, you know, takes us to the digital realm and, and does it at about 100 meters. Um, and then uniquely, so to the brand. Again, you will not see something out there, but 
And this skews honestly more towards residential, but there is something what we call a CAT 100 eARC that basically is the only product on the market that is a dedicated eARC extender, right? So again, building on innovation. Now, looking uh, further down the line, we look at HDMI signal manager, definitely a, a part of this, especially when we talk about problem solving. And Bluestream has a long history of creating boxes that help solve problems. So whether we have an issue with HPD, hot plug detect, or we have an issue with handshaking or clock stretching issues, devices like our signal manager help resolve these issues. Um, and just I was on a job site talking to a customer the other day. This was in New York, where they had a, a complex chain of devices coming back. And at the end, somewhere that EDID was getting lost. Right. And we could go to the chain and figure out where that was happening. But he's very simple. Had one of these on hand, was able to fix his problem by providing this right at the source. Right. Because we can store EDID in these devices. So very important. So again, not so dissimilar to a lot of other manufacturers. You may have heard this come other, under other names like, you know, EDID detectives and things like that. Or, um, but I can tell you this is that um, coming soon on this will be our first 8K version of this product, which is going to be able to do and, and support up to 40 gigabits of bandwidth on 8K right, for HDMI 2.1. So again, pushing that envelope forward. And of course, scalers are part of this category as well, because again, when we talk about conversion, there's a lot of times we need to scale up, down to 4K or or some other resolution, base of resolutions to, to, to VIC timings or CEA timings. That's certainly something we have to do very often as well. And so those are also part of the catalog. The one product I wanted to call out and talk about a little bit more specifically is the HD11 CTRL. So this particular product fits into this category as a signal manager. What it really allows us to do is really exert some control over an installation. So think about this as a single room for like for the cuddle rooms, think uh, a classroom where we need to implement some kind of control, but don't have either in the budget to do a full blown control, um, you know, uh, treatment on this room. Um, basically, we can put one of these devices and and really essentially use HDMI as a trigger for closing the shades or pulling down a projector, right? For turning a display on, whether it be projector or, dis or standard display. Um, this device allows us to macro up commands that perform these on, off, uh, you know, shade up and down, et cetera. Um, it can be triggered from that HDMI. So someone walks into a huddle room, plugs in their computer, laptop, or other device. That's the trigger point to set, set the everything off and in motion to basically get the entire room ready. In addition to this, we have external inputs. So you can even do this from a PIR sensor. So you want to connect a PIR sensor so that when someone just walks into that room, sets off an entire change to get the room ready for AV presentation, no problem. So this little device, which we've seen a lot of success for, one of the only products that we've had difficulty keeping in stock because there was another manufacturer is making a similar device. Um, and now we've been converting a lot of that business over to Bluestream. Uh, and this product, by, I should let you know, is getting an update to a new iteration Q1, Q2 of next year that'll allow us to, to do a little bit easier in terms of how we program this device um, through a GUI interface. You'll find that most all Bluestream products that have TCIP capabilities will also have a GUI interface, very important. Um, and that's certainly something we're gonna be adding to this particular product. So Dante, let's talk a little bit about Dante. So um, for those of you who hopefully probably most all of you understand Dante, I used to say was becoming the de facto, but it probably is the de facto standard now for audio over IP. So we are all probably very aware of the benefits of Dante um, and what it brings to the table, certainly in the broadcast side of things, uh, the MI industry, pro AV. Uh, and, and Bluestream got started roughly about half a decade ago, building um, basic on and off ramp devices. And that has really grown itself into a much larger catalog of, uh, let's call them more unique Dante products like this, the DA11 USB. Looks similar to an AVIO. I do get that quite a bit. But unlike the AVIO, this combines both the USB-B and USB-C capabilities into one box. There's a switch on the side so you can select between the two. So any of those installations where you need temporary connectivity or want to get someone up and running with Dante with any kind of you know, OS agnostic device, whether it's Chrome OS, whether it is um, Windows or, or iOS, whatever it may be, this certainly uses that because it has basically built in uh, UAC capability into here, right? So for USB audio standard. So very simple device to use. Moving on from that, the DA22 dig, also a fairly unique piece because it is a two by two. 
Now, a two by two in general, a Dante piece is certainly not inordinate. Um, there are those that exist, but this combines a couple of things and most importantly combines D to A capabilities and A to D capabilities directly on the box. So when we're combining consumer equipment, for example, that coming out optical or coaxial, we can directly feed into this box as opposed to having to convert it to analog first, which is traditionally how a lot of times we're sending stuff into a Dante network, right? So built into a little two by two piece here. And of course, both balanced and unbalanced capabilities, connectivities here. Mic connectivity with 48 volt phantom power is available on here as well. PoE powered, all in a small package. So a larger aggregate piece like the DA44 expands that to a four by four scenario. And this device even has uh, basically a Dante loop out on here. So we can, or basically a hub where we can connect roughly about seven of these units when we need a large quantity of IO in and out of a Dante network. So again, most everything is configurable on here point to point um, directly from that OLED discrete, the, well, the screen, the VFD screen that's on the front of this unit has 48 volt phantom power and the gain structure, the sensitivity structure can all be changed directly from this unit. It's a nice piece whenever we need to combine multiple sources, ins and outs. Um, and again, if we need a large quantity of IO. Um, we, we ran a four-way into a foray into uh, amplified audio. This is actually the first amplifier that Bluestream produced, and it is with Dante. Um, I do lovingly refer to this as the kitchen sink in terms of the IO capabilities. Um, the MPA 100 DA has 100 watts of bridged power in a small compact ampli amplifier that has an arc input. So again, this really lends itself to when we want to do something in the consumer realm, you having the fact that it's got arc capabilities, optical, balanced, unbalanced. It has even a crossover in here. If you wanted to do a small 2.1 audio system, uh, there's a crossover here that you can configure, um, as well as, of course, trigger capabilities. And the fact that the unit will also both do high Z, low Z. So, right. So we can do standard four ohm, eight ohm speakers. We can also do 70 volt and 100 volt as well. Now, all of this is powered off of PoE++. So you can get your connectivity control and amplification power directly from a single cable, provided we have a PoE++ switch that we can connect to. So all of this on a single cable makes it very convenient. Um, and it also means that we can work with other PoE standards. So as the PoE standards from PoE++ to PoE+, or even PoE, um, the amplifier then, of course, it will its power output will obviously modify, um, but these are usable with this system. So if not necessarily PoE++, we can certainly use other standards as well. A nice benefit to this. So this has got everything. So where we went from there is to move it down and stepped it to the MPA70. So a more compact amplifier for Dante um, brings it down to 35 watts a channel, but only using Dante as an input in this case. So we've taken all the other kitchen sink elements out. Now these device, this device, like the previous one, has full DSP capabilities, audio dunking functionality, 31 band DSP, EQ capabilities, um, fully controllable on here, also powered by PoE++. And then we decided to go even smaller. So this one is actually coming about the January timeframe is the MPA20DA. Now this uses a very specific um, class D amplifier that uses GAN technology, so it's gallium nitride, um, specifically on the MOSFET side. It helps us become certainly a lot more efficient. Um, take PoE plus in this case will provide us with 20 watts of power total bridged or 10 watts a channel in a small compact piece. Now this one only work for eight ohm speakers, but perfect for any small application where we just need amplification. We've had a lot of questions on this regarding, Hey, can we get plan rating on this? This is something that we're looking and getting into because certainly a device like this, how compact it is, the fact that it powers over PoE plus fitting it in a plan of space naturally makes a lot of sense. Um, and then we did this the DA22XLR. So there is certainly was, and, and probably even to this day, a little bit of a gap in the marketplace in terms of the availability for XLR wall plates. So um, we've built the two by two. So it's an XLR two input, two output um, with all the fine tuned controls you can either do from the front plate. Soon when we move over to the DEP platform, all these devices will be moving over to DEP. That's the Dante embedded platform that gets us out of the chip rat race. Um, these will all have that capability as well, including the ability to have a web GUI that will make it a little bit easier to configure and also control from an API standpoint, right? And that brings me to the Bluetooth wall plate as well. Another highly coveted piece that we know that has been certainly you know, necessitated and needed by a lot of people in our industry um, is Bluetooth connectivity over Dante. Again, we're not the only guys on the block that have a product like this, but know that Bluestream, again, we see these you know, advantages where, you know, we, we see a gap in the marketplace, we certainly need to fill it. So not only do we have products that, again, similar to other manufacturers, but at the same time, we're also building some of those more unique things like the Dante amplifiers. So video over IP. Video over IP is uh, like we talked about the Olympics earlier to, you know, 
in this session. Um, very important category for Bluestream. Um, and we started out with the IP200 line. You see there second from the left. And that led to further iterations as we expanded what really amounts to different use cases for video over IP. So what you're going to find is that all of the video over IP products all support really the same I.O. structure. In other words, we're going to provide on all the products the ability to do audio, video, IR, serial, USB, um, that's going to all be available on every single one. We don't like to have a box that is only going to do HDMI and another one that does HDMI and RS-232, another one that does you know, HDMI and USB. So you're going to get the same experience across the line. So what, how we're going to delineate between these systems is really going to be based on their vertical applications, right? So the IP50, being that it tops out at 1080p, really is designed for applications where we have a high quantity of units in use. So think about airports, digital signage deployments, right? Where 1080p is still being used in, you know, in high frequency, that's where the IP50 fits. So if we move it up to the 200 and the 250 line, right? We're looking at applications where we're bringing it into the 4K realm. So we think a lot of these sports bar applications um, and then the IP300 and 350 bring us to one gig on, on one gigabit, basically full 4K 60 in and out on a one gigabit infrastructure, right? So this gives us the ability to do full, you know, capabilities, including things like HDR, should you need them, connectivity for interactivity with USB functionality, all on a one gigabit network. And the last side, of course, the IP500 is based on SDVOE. Now, these solutions end up being a little bit you know, more niche in terms of their application where we need either uncompressed capabilities or the extremely low latency that we get from something like that. Um, we've seen them used, for example, in medical applications before command and control scenarios where we need the fidelity. And the fact that the IP500 is the only line that actually supports multi-viewing, so that's combining multiple sources on a singular screen in the IP500. So again, Based on the different scenarios, the experience is the same. The drag and drop user interface, which makes switching a breeze, is all going to be available on every single one of these platforms. But the differential on how you choose them is going to be based on what? It could be latency based. It could be compression based. It could be I need a certain maximum resolution. So a chart like this really helps you iron out which system is going to be right for the end user or for that particular installation. Now the 200 and 250 or a 300 and 350, I didn't mention this before, but that 50 moniker on both of those, the 350 and 250, means that those devices carry Dante capabilities. And with Dante also means AES 67 in this case as well. So you can mix 200 and 250s to have scenarios where you have non-Dante transmitters and receivers. And in some cases where you do need Dante, you can also use, and it's really compatible with the Dante, you know, TX and RX. We have you know, a transmitter and receiver for both of those. So in the 200 line and the 300 line, we have Dante capabilities in both those platforms. And how do you get it all together? No problem. All the devices in the Bluestream lineup are using the same enclosure structure and style and size. And so, of course, we have a handy 2U uh, rack mount accessories that can get four of those units, whether they be transmitters or receivers, into a rack very easily. So certainly necessary to make sure everything is nicely uh, kept um, organized. So matrices, um, these specifically we talk about HD based T matrices. We have seen a lot of our competitors pull out of the standard matrix category um, and not necessarily saying that's a wrong move, but we still find it's very prevalent and a lot of users still require standard four by four and eight by eight matrices, right? Especially from a cost perspective, come up against an IP line. Um, standard video over IP matrices, I'm sorry, HD based T matrices are certainly something that are still prevalently used. I mean, there's a conference room application I just looked at yesterday that needed a four by two. And Bluestream, sure enough, has a 4 by 2 device specifically with HD base T on the outputs for that kind of application for input to out. The contractor series, the base of the line, um, our matrices designed only when we need basic HDMI matrixing and extension. Um, moving up from there, the essential line adds the ability to start managing audio. And all the platforms in the Essential series have audio matrixing capabilities built in, which means we can take audio and not only from an audio breakout, like you'll see on a lot of matrices where they just take audio and they break it out from the outputs. You have the ability from that platform to take it from the inputs. So that's always static audio from an input side, from the outputs or from remote locations, whether it comes back over optical tossling or through an ARC channel. All right, so full matrices in the Essential series. Moving up from there is the Custom Pro series. And the Custom Pro really is unique in the sense that it's a modular platform and puts us really closer in the category of the Crestron DM type products where you need a modular platform or a large platform um, that you're going to be able to customize for a specific installation. The Platinum series moves up from there and adds really kind of um, 
the more advanced functionality, typically DSP features, we usually reserve the Platinum moniker for products that, for example, get the top of our range. And last but not least is an HDBase T spec 3.0 product. And we'll look at that last. So the one matrix we will talk about is, and again, when we talk about commercial application and usage is the custom pro matrix. It comes in an eight by eight and a 16 by 16 chassis that's fully modular and customizable. So inputs there, like you see on this image here on the left and on the right hand side are the outputs. And of course we can mix and match cards as necessary. So whether you need an HD base T input that works perfectly well with any of the wall plates that we have, we have that. Now cards come in either a two or four IO format. So you can really kind of iron out the exact number of IO that you need. And if you expand, kind of like with the video or IP system, you can swap those cards out. Know that there is no configuration necessary on the system. You literally plug in the cards, boot up the unit, and everything works right off the bat. So HDBase T, HDMI, both input and outputs are available in various flavors of HDBase T, because as you may or may not know, HDBase T, of course, depending on their light or non-light versions, come in different capabilities in terms of distance. That's certainly there. Or like the card you see right here on screen, which has both dual outputs. So they're mirrored outputs. HDMI and HDBase T, which then expands the outputs to double the numbers. So you could have a 16 by 32, albeit half of those, of course, will be mirrored outputs, but it does give you IO saturation if that's something that you need. Now, most of the cards that we have and we stock, at least in the US, are going to be the 18 gigabit cards, right? And we use um, you know, Chroma subsampling to get to 18 gigs when we're not using something like HD base T. Now, um, to specify a system makes it pretty simple. We have a guide directly on the website that gives you all the input and output, you know, different availability of cards. It's a great resource to have on building out a custom pro matrix. And because it's a platform that's modular, we're continually developing on it. So just recently, we just released right in the last few months, this card, the Pro In 4 HDA. This is a Dante Impa card. So now we've added Dante capability to this platform where we can demux the audio off of any of those HDMI inputs and throw them into a Dante matrix. So if you wanted to pull audio off of a satellite feed coming in, two channels of PCM, no problem. We can then feed that into the Dante network for amplification anywhere that Dante is, of course, available and reachable. At the same time, if we wanted to use a PA system or some other background music audio that we wanted to overlay on top of the HDMI, we can pull in up to eight channels of audio and then overtake, of course, or mux in that audio into the HDMI stream, taking over its original source. Right, both those capable. You can use multiple of these cards to build an entire matrix uh, that is fully capable of doing, you know, Dante both in and out uh, on a custom pro matrix now. So this really helps us bring that proposition closer to being, you know, something like a DM where we've got the Dante capabilities with HD base T with HDMI in and out. The last matrix I'll talk about is this, the HMX 18G and the HMX 88 18G. So both of these platforms, four by four and eight by eight, these fit into the essential line because Again, adding those audio matrix capabilities, but all the outputs on here use the VS3K or the HDBase T 3.0 chipset on the output side, which means completely uncompressed audio and video on every single output of the matrix. Um, as far as I know, we're the only company right now that has a product like this, which is fully HDBase T 3.0 on all outputs of a matrix. So in situations where, again, we need uncompromising output, again, where we don't want to have any kind of compression. It basically was the promise of what HD base T was when it first started out, giving fully uncompressed 1080p 60 uh, is now capable with HDMI 2.0 and soon to be USB 3.0. And beyond that, of course, we're looking at probably higher revisions of HDMI as well, 2.1, 120 hertz, et cetera. So that leads me into this. When we talk about, and I just mentioned kind of USB, USB 3.0, where is that? Well, rest assured that USB 3.0 extension is being worked on. A lot of that business currently today is, is managed, is where to say not managed, but owned by Icron. Icron makes a lot of products in that industry for it. But there's certainly a lot of other players who are trying to harness, you know, different methodologies and ICs to, of course, reach HD or a USB 3.0 extension. Certainly necessity. So as it stands right now, USB 2.0, Bluestream has an array of products for USB extension like this, the Hex 70 USB kit, which gives us basically a KVM extender in a very small compact package that allows us to do USB and video. We have the UEX 100E kit. This particular product is what I'd like to call a universal extender. This is actually based on um, Valen's HDBase T technology. So uh, USB extension over two wire, which was designed initially for the automotive industry is what this product uses. And we've harnessed those other lines to of course, transmit other control signaling. So this device will do USB, of course, it'll do serial, it'll do IR, it'll do audio, and it'll do ethernet altogether 
in a singular box. Everything basically except for the the, the AV part, the the the, the HDMI extension, for example. This is a perfect product product for retrofits. If you have a redundant cat line that's running somewhere and you need any one of these IOs, you can get all of them on a single cat 5e, a single cat 5 line to get all your peripheral data onto one cable, right? So I see this a lot in combination with other, if you're using like, for example, an AOC fiber optic cable going to display, if you've ran a redundant cat cable there, you can get all this other additional functionality for control. Um, even like I said, in terms of IP capability, which let's face it, a lot of stuff nowadays being controlled over IP, and this gives us that avenue to do it. And then stepping down to the UEX 50B kit, which is your basic USB extender. You know, uh, in a in a past life, I worked for a company that, you know, USB extenders was probably the bread and butter number one selling volume skew that we had uh, because USB extension, whether we know it or not, is, is highly prevalent, especially in the commercial side where we need, for example, to extend something like a large format printer or, for example, specialized equipment using USB. So this does any kind of USB device, isochronous, asynchronous, over 50 meters of extension um, in a small, compact, very competitively priced product. Um, and the last kind of unique USB product I'm going to talk about, I'm going to get off the USB high horse here and start talking about um, multi-format presentation switchers last, um, is the MX44 KVM. This is a USB 3.0. Let's talk about it in a bandwidth terminology, because if you're familiar with the USB 3.1 Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 2 plus 2, et cetera, it gets kind of confusing. But let's talk about it in terms of bandwidth. So we can do 5 gigabits of USB throughput in a matrix format. So we can combine multiple devices to a singular source and then switch that around fairly easily. While we initially had designed this to turn any of our matrices, 4x4, 8x8, et cetera, into KVM matrices, because we relay commands through the unit, hence the reason there's two serial ports on this device. So you only send one command and we handle all of the proper switching on matrices, et cetera, downstream. It turns out we've actually been seeing this product used more in conference room applications for switching peripheral devices between multiple computers, whether it is a standalone computer device in a room or a user that wants to walk in. Having a matrix that's there allows a switch remotely through a control system, whatever it may be, to switch all the audio peripherals, video peripherals, all the USB from one user to another or from a device to another, right? It is a matrix in that sense. It is a matrix product for USB. Uh, we've seen competitors do switches, which is great. In this case, it is an actual matrix, right? So the last category we'll talk about is multi-format presentation switchers. So very specific, you know, we see this a lot in corporate, hospitality, meeting room spaces, in, in ballrooms and in, in hotels, et cetera, is the necessity for, of course, collaboration and bringing multiple people together to, to share, or like in this case, like do a presentation. Right. So the first product we'll talk about is the AMF41W. Now, this piece really was a boon for Bluestream in terms of giving us the ability to have both wired and wireless being collaborative on a single screen. So we can do AirPlay, we can do Miracast, um, as well as have up to four different HDMI sources combined on a single screen for up to seven different sources. So four of one type, three of the other, four wireless, and then three wired, or four wired and three wireless. So for collaborative purposes, this box functions as an access point, right? It functions as a BYOD, so to bring in other laptop mobile devices, as well as be suitable for to host, example, like, like I said, a localized PC that may be hosting BYOM, right? And on the wired side, we have some things like the AMF42. Now, again, this is just a sampling of what Bluestream offers, but this gives us the ability to seamlessly switch between multiple HDMI, DisplayPort, USB sources, and that USB on there actually also provides PD capabilities. So, of course, you can charge your laptop while also presenting at the same time with HD base T output to address, you know, to a direct screen itself. Both, both, um, I was going to say balanced and unbalanced inputs and outputs in terms of audio and mic input as well, right? So, we this device really is skewed more towards what we call like the education or a conference room where you have, for example, a specific lecture or a lectern where someone will be presenting. So think education. We have this actually being deployed quite a bit in the UK and in, in a university there in their lecture halls, right? And the last piece I have that I want to talk about here really briefly is this, the Hex 70 H UK. It's kind of a long part name and some Bluestream products are like that, uh, but they're really descriptive. And once you learn how the nomenclature functions, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but in this case, we're talking about a single conference room kind of setup where we need distribution to a display and the ability to, to bring in USB, not only at the base station, but pops USB devices at the screen as well. For example, like a, a camera, USB 2.0 camera that we can bring back from the screen area and combine that with any USB peripherals that we may be having 
at localized like uh, audio devices and then can switch them of course between different computers that are plugged in and working in tandem with this of course we'll have a drop-in kit this is an optional accessory that gives us a nice finished look so these products uh, along with the other plethora of different multi-format presentation devices that Bluestream has, the extenders, the splitters, the switchers, the video over IP, the Dante, there is a wide world of, of AV distribution products that Bluestream certainly offers. And I've given you just a taste. I know it's been quite a long presentation and I appreciate you guys listening in to my incessant ramblings over the last 50 minutes, but thank you for your time. And I, on that, I will hand it back over for Q&A. Should we have any? Uh, right back to you guys. Let me just open the mic for everyone. No problem. There you go. So people can unmute themselves now and you can ask your questions directly to Jason. Oh, Jason, we did have a question in um, in the chat from Jason, yep. from Jared, sorry. Uh, how soon is the USB 3.0 extender coming? So I will tell you this, um, from a development standpoint, the hardware is actually approved. So like HDBase T 3.0, the chip designs um, were finalized years ago, but the firmware side needs development. And so this is gonna take some fine tuning, but I can tell you right now that the hardware designs from our perspective are complete, <clears throat> um, which means we're basically left it now really to the firmware updates that we're gonna get in the box. So our earliest best guess, honestly, for 3.0 extension, and we'll have, and just to give you an idea, cause we are working, we have a, about 70 products in development right now. Um, Four of those are USB 3.0 extension products. So we're talking about two wall plates in two flavors, right? For the US market and for the EU UK, and then a box version of a USB 3.0 extender. So best guess is probably going to be probably at the earliest, safely say Q2 next year. Um, but we're waiting for mature firmware um, for that to work out. And it's using HDBase T technology, right? They're jumping into this game, which is a great thing to see. We so have kind of a long way to the answer. <laughs> we have a follow-up question for this and then yeah. is, will it be over copper or fiber? It'll be over copper. So if you're familiar with Icron and their deployments of the technology, you know, they've done it over, I think their FPGA deployments over fiber optic initially, um, and then they can do it over copper, but it's it's quite a large box, right? And a lot of heat sink. So these are very compact mm -hmm. pieces using um, USB technology. So they will be over copper and not fiber. Also, oh, here we go. Follow-up. Uh, also, do you offer smaller priority switchers, two by one, three by one, et cetera? So we do. We have, so typically four by four, six by six, eight by the cutoffs. We do have some four by two matrix type switching products, uh, matrix extension uh, products as well. Um, two by one, four by one are the breakpoints for most just standard switchers on a whole. And just note that all switchers support auto, um, auto sensing on input side. It's a function for auto switching that you can turn on and off. Warranty period. So in the year warranty period is three years. Um, RMA process. So the RMA process, actually, that's probably an SFM question for RMA in that case. Um, what I'll do for the RMA process, I'll, I will in, in the email that when we, we send you the link to the PowerPoint slides, well, uh, Manny Michelle, can we document the RMA process for them as well? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Certainly, I know on the US side, I mean, definitely reach out to our support line to help, you know, with some issues that you have. Um, you know, and of course there's things like over the counter exchange, et cetera. And so that's definitely going to be like an SFM policy, but just know that, you know, as SFM is obviously going to be frontline of defense for, for you guys and you know, your, your, your customer, you are their customers, of course. And we'd like to preserve that at the same time, we're also here as a resource too, to help out. You know, in fact, we regularly are receiving calls from Canada in terms of, and we are here to support anybody who's who's certainly purchasing Bluestream products. So let us help out in that regard in terms of helping resolve an issue, right? Because a lot of times it's a simple thing to be nine times out of 10, we can resolve it on a first tech support call or a, a chat even. And beyond that, of course, you know, if it's an RMA, we can even provide an RMA or not an RMA, but a case number to know that, you know, for example, that it has gone through support and everything that we can done. And it turns out maybe a product is defective and needs to be replaced. Excellent questions, by the way. I love it. All right. Anyone else? Oh. Don't forget you can unmute yourself so you can ask your questions. Yeah, we can we can hear your voice as you've been listening to mine. And I get tired of listening to my voice. So <laughs> oh, I love this. Great. Well, we are here to support you guys. So again, a wide array of products uh to work with, certainly that fit, you know, most any vertical. Um I did cut you guys out from my 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 spiel about 
you know, the five tenants of signal distribution where video over IP covers all five, but know that we have those covered extension, splitting, switching, matrixing, and conversion. All of those solutions Bluestream does carry under their banner, right? So for most applications, I, I want to say any application, but you know, some's going to come in with that wild. I mean, the one, the two things we probably don't support at this time is SDI and wireless. Um, but that's not to say that's not being worked on. So, but you know, for most everything else, we are here. Okay. I don't think we have any more questions for today. So the last call for questions. Okay. <clears throat> so I think we're good. And uh, thank you so much, Jason, for this presentation today. Thank you, everyone, for participating through the training. Uh, we're very happy and lucky to have you here. Uh, for any questions, you can always uh, send an email to Simon or our team or Jason or go to the Blue Stream and uh, sort of live chat <laughs> there. Yeah, absolutely. Follow us on Facebook, uh, former Twitter. Uh, I think it's called X now. Right. It's just a singular letter. Instagram. Um, any questions like she said, please feel free to ask. I am more than happy to help out. Um, and that's where you're here to support SFM, to support your efforts and support your clients. Uh, I just got a question here. So for, oh, Blue Stream, yeah. for Bluestream video over IP devices, is there a license for adding units? No, 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 no. So all these devices handle typically via an ASIC on the device. So there are no licenses necessary. It's it's really just baked into the hardware itself. So even on the platform that we have for the control side of it, um, you know, the because the, there obviously is a controller that's necessary to get those to function. Um, that drag and drop interface comes with the unit without any kind of licensing. And all of them do support video wall capabilities. The SDVOE product is the only one that supports multi-viewing. Um, and there are some multi-view products in our category or uh, in our product line as well. And in fact, some some that are actually just on the spoke of coming out as well. Um, so when you want to add external multi-viewing capabilities, we have that as well, um, whether you know it's baked into a platform like STVOE or not. So yeah, once you purchase the products in the controller, no licensing or additional licensing is necessary. Again, kind of a long <laughs> response, but hopefully that answered your question. Yeah. Any more? Yeah, please. I'm uh, more than happy to answer. Although you may get a paragraph in response. So I got another one. So would you also sell the network configured switch? So in, in terms of network configuring switches, um, Bluestream has taken the stance more. So we use multicast for mo for all of our IP products in terms of, of how we're switching. So we know some manufacturers use VLAN switching and that particular ASIC that's associated with that bum is very similar to other ones. But um, the fact of the matter is, is that with multicast, typically the configuration is very basic. What we do offer online is different switch configuration guides to show you how to get those switches set up um, in the basic sense. So IGMP multicasting, like IGMP snooping, we turn that on. Jumbo frames, because on most of our platforms are about 8K in terms of payloads for the MTU size. And so... Once you turn those features on, in most cases, you're good to go. And again, without plugging a particular manufacturer switch, but you know, Netgear, for example, has like the M4250 line, the AV lineup. Those options are already enabled by default. We're finding other manufacturers that this might become the status quo as well as enabling those multicast functions, which means the switches don't need any kind of pre-configuration. You just plug everything and go. So if not, reference those guides. We have guides for TP-Link, Cisco, D-Link, uh, PackEdge, Luxel, um, Arachnus, uh, yeah, I mean, I, there are probably others, Ubiquity as well, even. So we have guides available to show you what's necessary to get the IP products. And really what it amounts to is just getting, um, standard layer two multicasting functioning, right? So this isn't layer three. We're not any doing a kind of inter VLAN switching along these products. It's all flat layer two that we use on these products. So, um, it's fairly straightforward to set up, um, you know, um, but if you have a question, even on setup, we also can be on tap and online to help with those, especially if you've maybe not done an IP system before, or if you've done it and you want some particular help with a particular one, give us a call and we can even set up a, a time to even go over and help you guys with that. I have a few more questions. So all right. <laughs> does, does all you, uh, all your units come with power supply? Yes. All units come with power supplies. So 
Um, yeah, with resident power supply for the particular region. So in the U.S., they use you know 110 power supplies. All power supplies are pretty much switching power supplies, so either 220 or you know 110, 220, etc. Um, but yeah, they do come with power supplies. Yeah, even the products, for example, that are PoE powered, like the MPA, MPADA amplifiers, will come with their own power supplies. Um, you know, should you choose or want to use it, but it's not necessary if you power a PoE plus. So you have a backup. I have another question from Jared. Mm -hmm. So uh, was there a controller needed for the AV over IP devices? Yeah, so all the AV over IP. So, I mean, in, in, inherently the technology behind most of this, the devices technically communicate with each other, the endpoints. Um, what the controllers facilitate, and this is most everybody's platform is like this, is you need a way to aggregate the data. Um, one, because you need a single point of contact for a control system usually to coordinate and talk to, right? In addition to that, um, the way most controllers, for most anyone who's doing video over IP in this industry sets it up, is typically you're doing off of two network interfaces. So we can help segregate physically the video over IP traffic from normal, like, normal traffic. Um, it's not necessary. Um, but we certainly recommend it. I've got certainly customers who put both the control and video lands on a singular switch environment, you know, even VLAN off or not VLAN off. That certainly happened before. We recommend VLANing it off for the multicast traffic, uh, but not necessary. So yeah, there's one controller required with each system, right? So it's only just one. And that provides a couple of things. One, it provides an easy way to set up the system, right? Because we automatically go out and detect all the units and assign addresses, whether via DHCP, which is an option, or statically, which is our normal, the way we've done it for a long time, the DHCP side of it is actually new. Um, and so that is something that the system will do automatically. So it facilitates that setup side and then gives you day-to-day -day controls. Is it the most appropriate interface for daily interaction? Perhaps, depends on the vertical. Like if you've got a bar restaurant application, you can use that interface that we provide as a way to switch inputs but it only controls the, the matrix switching, right? If you need to change a source channel, like on a direct TV box, as an example, we don't facilitate that through that system. We only change the actual physical inputs and outputs. And that's where a control system comes in. Hence the reason we provide the drivers. So you use it with RTI or Crestron or C4 or, or Extron or whoever it may be, or QSIS, right? We have a driver for QSIS specifically for the IP products. Um, we'll help facilitate that, that management of that system. And then you use that control platform then to control the sources and displays directly. Now, some of our matrix products, they have the ability to put in um, direct RS-232 commands or trigger CEC should you want to use it um, as part of like an auto power on sequence. So a lot of our presentation products have that. Some of our matrices, actually a lot of the matrices have that built in as well, where you can trigger via serial RS-232 um, the ability to turn on displays. Um, and there are some pretty advanced RS-232 RS-232 serial control relaying, like we call it guest mode, but the ability, for example, to control individual outputs on a matrix uh, using different Telnet ports, right? So different ports numbers will means you can directly communicate with each screen individually, right? Using different TCP port port addresses that I believe are, yeah, they're assignable, right? So a lot of advanced control capabilities there. Um, I think your question was about controllers on the IB product. Sorry, I went ahead of myself, but yes, one per, per installation. Sorry, any other questions, Michelle? No, I don't have any more questions than Jared had <laughs> okay. to be because he had to run, but I uh, will send this recording to everyone, so it should be fine. Good. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, I think that's it for us. If there's no more questions, thank you all for attending once again, and uh, a pleasure, uh, Jason. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Jason. Thanks so much. All right, take care. Sure. Bye. Bye-bye.